Everyone ready to talk about Gluster? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so my name's Stephen Nemeth. Uh, this here is Blaine. I'll let him introduce himself in a minute here. Uh, we're here to talk about Rook. So quick show of hands. Who here is already using Ceph? OK. Anyone here already using Rook? How about uh, other storage provider providers, just to get a quick census here? OK, so um, again, my name's Stephen Nemeth. I work with the Solutions Architecture Group inside SUSE. And Blaine here is an engineer. I'll hand it over to him. Sure, I think, yeah, I'm already plugged up. Do you need this? Oh, OK, yeah. Uh, yeah, I work for SUSE's uh, enterprise storage product uh, group that is Ceph-based, and I work specifically with the containerization, uh, which means lots of Rook for me. Uh, also, this is my first conference talk, so bear with you know, any hiccups that I have here at the beginning. Uh, also, I am uh, one, of the Ceph or one of the Ceph maintainers in the Rook project upstream. Uh, so I suppose I'll just keep going here. Um, Uh, thank you, Stephen, for also lending me your OpenStack expertise making this presentation. I, it really wouldn't exist in the shape that it does without his help. Um, uh, after introducing ourselves, I want to introduce Rook. Uh, and in a few words, I would say that Rook is an intelligent software operator that can help deploy and manage, or it does deploy, and it can help manage a Ceph cluster, uh, constantly watching it to make sure that it's healthier uh, for more of the time. Uh, Rook is a member or is sponsored by the Cloud Native Com Computing Foundation, which is the Kubernetes community's uh, large open stat or large foundation. Uh, and it's the Ceph community's official solution for containerizing Ceph on Kubernetes, and it's a large part of, uh, of the focus uh, of Ceph currently. So when preparing to give this presentation, I was actually looking up some figures to get an idea for uh, like how, how big is Ceph in the OpenStack community and learned from the 2018 surveys that 61% of uh, OpenStack deployments use Ceph. And uh, the next largest is KVM with 15%. Uh, so that's, that was kind of nuts to me. Uh, Ultimately, uh, we, you know, most of us run Ceph, and Ceph unfortunately has a reputation for being hard to administrate. And I've kind of equated this to uh, playing chess. It's difficult, but you can learn it with lots of practice. There are probably some people who enjoy it. Uh, the bottom line is that system administrators spend a lot of time trying to keep Ceph healthy. Uh, and that's a lot of time that could be spent working on other applications or time that could be spent not working when they're on call. Uh, a friend of mine told me one time that time is our most precious resource and it's the only thing we can't buy more of. In 2015, along came this thing called Kubernetes. And Kubernetes's orchestration and self-healing capabilities promised to make orchestrating anything uh, easy. And so we have the question, what if, what if we could have Kubernetes run Ceph for us? What if administrators could play checkers and then Kubernetes would play the chess in the background? And so AT&T uh, started the OpenStack Helm project. Uh, at least that's my understanding of it. And that was the first major uh, the first large solution for orchestrating Ceph, amongst other things, on Kubernetes. Uh, so I, I guess as a show of hands, how many people here are using the, the Helm charts for deploying Ceph as part of their clusters? Okay, actually not, not a lot. So uh, is, would you say that you, for those of you not using the Helm charts, is that because they're difficult or I mean, it's like, is it because it's difficult? Uh, 
anyway, Ceph, Ceph's gotten to the point where it's very stable uh, functionally. Uh, new features are, are still coming in, but they're stable. And the Ceph community is beginning to focus a lot more on the usability of Ceph. Uh, and Rook is a, a huge part of that focus and that effort. With Rook, instead even of checkers, we want administrators to be able to play tic-tac-toe and have Kubernetes still play the checkers in the background. And I think that Rook is and can, can be more in the future something great for the OpenStack community. Before I get too far from the topic of, open, of the Helm charts, uh, when, when the Ceph community first started looking for uh, an official containerization solution for Kubernetes, this was one of the first stops. And what we found was that these Helm charts are very complex, which I'm sure is a big shock to all of you. There's lots of conditional templating, uh, and uh, especially the conditional bash templating was uh, not, not so much fun, in a few words. Uh, additionally, Helm and its server component, Tiller, they aren't, uh, they aren't particularly transparent uh, and amount to what is effectively a templating engine. And it, it's just really hard to debug through that. And from a developer standpoint, it kind of feels like a Rube Goldberg machine made from parts on hand. And uh, that, that was making development difficult for any sort of substantial features. And that was making our development slow. And when development's slow, um, we're, we're, we're using up that precious resource that we have time. And when it's, when it's hard, when it's slow, we also have fewer features. There's a bigger uh, opportunity for bugs to show up. And the, the kind of bottom line is that I think Helm is a tool that isn't really designed for, prepared for running an application that is as stateful uh, and complex as Ceph is. And uh, having said this, uh, I actually want to say that the Helm charts are actually very uh, impressive. Like I looked through them recently and was, uh, for, for what they have to do and for the tools that they have to work with, uh, it's, it's a very nice looking code base. Uh, but I think we can do better. Uh, starting with, uh, with Rook, we have a Ceph operator that's a single application. There's no longer Helm or Tiller. Um, it's simpler uh, to run, to debug, to develop. And we spend a lot of time in Rook still trying to make it more and more simple, uh, trying to reclaim for ourselves and for our users more time in the future. And we're always looking for community feedback uh, and trying to listen for how we can do that better. And I have a demo that I'm going to show you uh, for uh, just to kind of show how, how easy Rook is to start getting work, start working with. Uh, and before we go too much further, I want to uh, start with what, what are we actually creating here? Uh, firstly, we have our OpenStack cluster, which is uh, just a node that's set up by DevStack uh, for this demo. We have a five node Kubernetes cluster. And uh, within that cluster, we are going to run Rook, which will be a single application. And Rook will, once we've defined what our Ceph cluster looks like, run Ceph across all of the nodes. Those nodes each have four extra disks added. And so once we get to, once we get to the end, we should have 20 Ceph OSDs. And additionally, you, because this is Kubernetes, you can run your user applications on these same nodes. And if we pull in OpenStack into this Kubernetes cluster as well, as well we would have a fully hyper-converged environment. And that's pretty neat. Uh, also, you can find uh, the, the files, the configuration files, and a uh, simple readme for how, how to get started with this if you want to do it yourself. Um, but let's, let's talk about installing Rook now. So we have Kubernetes set up. Uh, 
now we need to define some YAML files for, for what Rook looks like. And there are five basic components that I would break it down into. There are basic definitions being sort of role-based authentication uh, that Rook needs to actually run and have permissions. Those are things that we don't want to have Rook do itself because then it would have more privileges than it needs to. There's also the Ceph operator itself. Uh, and when I, when I say operator, this is you know, the, coin, the, coin, the term coined by uh, CoreOS for the pattern Rook uses of administrating something for, uh, using an application running in Kubernetes. And the operator is what controls Ceph effectively. Uh, there's the definition of what the cluster is and looks like. And then there are also uh, block object file storage definitions for uh, you know, what block storage, what file storage or object storage do you want to create in the cluster to be able to use. And we're primarily in, uh, interested in block for this demo. And there's also a toolbox, which is uh, what you would uh, exec into in Kubernetes to actually talk to your Ceph cluster to use the Ceph command line utilities. <coughs> Uh, very briefly, I won't go into detail. We have a basic Ceph cluster definition. Uh, this is the one that we use for the demo, and this is one that would be sufficient for running in an organization. Uh, it's only 18 lines of YAML. Uh, some of that just nested things. So let's, uh, let's fire it up, and I'll kind of talk through those uh, uh, the things as they're being created. So first of off, first off, we don't have anything running currently, and here are the YAML files that we have to work with for the demo. We're going to create those common base resources and the operator itself, which constitutes quite a few things. And once that once that's done, we can see that the operator is running, as are uh, some daemons which collect information from the hosts, and then we're going to create the cluster and the toolbox. And that whole installation process, uh, even going through fairly slowly, was about 30 seconds. Uh, I'm going to start up the install. You can watch what happens in four times speed, how Rook sets up the Ceph cluster. Uh, I'm going to kind of continue on uh, with, uh, you know, I don't know about all of you, but this, this process is a lot easier than any other Ceph orchestration that I have seen uh, and experienced firsthand. And something that we're not demoing here is that Rook is capable easily of deploying single node clusters. And that's something that is often kind of reserved for development or uh, sort of POC environments. And so all of, all of the simplicity of this setup uh, Rook setting it up automatically, uh, the single node support. Uh, this is all really important for making Ceph accessible to a, a wider audience of people without all of the technical knowledge that a lot of us here have, whether that's a cash-strapped startup or a university. Uh, there are lots of organizations that are asking for this and have been for a while. And now that this is done, you can see that this actually took less than four minutes, even with the, the 30 second setup time uh, on my five nodes with my 20 OSDs. Once Ceph is up, then we connect it to OpenStack. And I, I want to specifically focus on just the parts of this that are different from what we're already doing to connect Ceph to OpenStack. Uh, starting with sort of uh, identifying that with Rook to connect to OpenStack, you have to use Kubernetes host networking. There are some implications of this that I will uh, talk to a little bit later. Uh, but Rook does create the RBD, the block pools, automatically, or you can configure it to create those. Uh, manual creation of the authentication for the users is still necessary. And that's primarily done through that toolbox pod with a command similar to what you see above. And then after this, all that's left is to continue configuring OpenStack the way that OpenStack is today configured. 
Uh, those block configurations I mentioned, again, are 27 lines of YAML for three block pools. And uh, for, for that manual user authentication, uh, going through the toolbox adds what you see here in green, a sort of diff-like view of the green being what's added, doing this with Rook compared to, to doing this today. And uh, also I can point out that the toolbox pod lines, the three at the, at the start really only need to be executed once for any script. What else can Rook do? Uh, monitor failover is not terribly complicated. It can do that. Uh, it can do some simple OSD recovery. And this is also an area where we wanna see more improvements in the future. Uh, Rook can roll out updates to itself, uh, which involves updating not just the Rook application, but some of the Ceph components as well to make sure that they follow the latest uh, security uh, things that Rook sets up. It can also roll out updates to Ceph, including updates from, say, the Mimic version of Ceph to the latest Nautilus version automatically without the user having to touch anything other than to tell the update to start. Nothing in life is perfect. Uh, everything, everything can be better. Uh, what, can, what, can Rook, uh, what can the Rook community and the Ceph community and OpenStack community do to continue to improve the Rook experience with OpenStack? Uh, firstly, you know, always more, more, more features in Rook. Uh, I also mentioned talking about implications of host networking. Uh, that comes with some security, uh, security concerns. Uh, and so being able to harden the host, uh, harden the networking so that we can still use that host networking for speed and uh, use something like Multis in Kubernetes or uh, eBPF, IPVS to also prevent us from experiencing slowdowns while doing that. Also fuller automated OSD recovery in Rook. You know, what we all want to get to is that, you know, pie in the sky of OSDs automatically recovering. Uh, and when they can't, having a very well-defined workflow where the application will guide you through uh, replacing an OSD easily. There's also this really cool thing uh, that we've, uh, uh, that has made it into the latest Nautilus version of Ceph now uh, in a skeleton format is the, the Ceph dashboard orchestrator. And this orchestrator is capable of uh, actually communicating with Rook, the vision being with the later versions of Ceph and Rook. From the Ceph dashboard, we can have a one-stop shop for managing Ceph, even the deployment of Ceph, and it will just call out to Rook to do things. And then all of, most of the YAML that you see goes away. There are also things like integrating Rook into Airship, uh, or things like Airship, uh, maybe the Helm charts, and also giving OpenStack the concept of Kubernetes persistent volume claims, so that, uh, if it can use persistent volume claims, it doesn't actually have to even know that a Ceph cluster is running. It just has to know that it needs block storage. So whether you're just interested in giving Rook a try, you wanna run it in your organization, or you wanna get involved, I wanna leave with a little bit more information about how, how to contact, uh, how, how to get involved with, how to contact Rook, sorry. Slack and GitHub, I would say, are the best places to start. You can at me if you like. Uh, anyone there is very willing to answer questions and welcome new people into the community. Uh, there's also the Rook website. Uh, a new version is dropping tomorrow uh, along with the 1.0 version of Rook, uh, which is uh, what was running in the demo here. Rook has a bi-weekly community meeting if you have any any concerns for Rook, any issues you want to bring up, uh, or just want to learn more about what Rook is, is doing, uh, you can go to our community meetings. More information is there on the GitHub README. 
Uh, and again, if you're looking for the presentation files, uh, you can go to uh, my own repo. I have a presentations there. I, uh, I hope to hear about your experiences with Rook, whether uh, upstream or down, and uh, let's go reclaim some time together. Uh, yeah, so now it's our favorite part. <laughs> Question and answer time. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to come up to the mic here and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. Yeah. Ryan, I just have a question because we are trying to use Rook. And as we all know that when we're using, when we use Ceph, one of the major work is just to, for the daily operation. So some bugs, some nodes that we try, try to re recover data to another node. So my question here, I just want to understand, in Rock, do you have some dedicated operation tools that we can use? Or you are planning to develop some dedicated operation tools? Um, so the, as I understand the question, you're asking if Rook has uh, special tools for uh, dealing with stuff within the Rook context. Exactly. Um, none of those tools currently exist, I would say. Uh, so I mentioned the, uh, the Ceph orchestrator being a sort of one-stop shop for uh, managing Ceph. That is the sort of vision of tooling, I would say, and that would be um, also a CLI component would be a part of that. It wouldn't just be a dashboard. So I, I would say that that is probably the closest uh, to an answer for your particular question, we don't we don't have special Rook tools or Rook CLI or anything. Okay, uh, second question is an, an open question here. So I'm now using uh, Rook, and I, I like to convince my colleagues to use Rook instead of using the standard stuff that we use now. So how I can convince my colleagues <laughs> in this case? Right. So um, earlier it asked how many of you guys had to use Ceph. How many of you have containerized Ceph yourself? Anyone? Anyone? Did anyone have any pain points when, like, say, an OSD comes down and you need to recover it? It's a pretty painful experience, potentially. Um, you know, zapping the drive, bringing back into the cluster, something like that. So um, the entire idea is to have, you know, a standard template or a standard image that you can go ahead and deploy and have it place OSDs consistently. And that's exactly what the operator does in the context of Rook. So rather than have to manually uh, decommission the drive, bring it back up, and then uh, add it as a new OSD, hopefully you can just use YAML and let Kubernetes do a large portion of that for you. If you're containerizing it yourself, there's a number of things you have to go ahead and track, specifically at the OSD level. So uh, just look at the pain points there, <laughs> and it should sell itself. Yeah, I think to add on to that, I think the magic is kind of right here. We've just told Rook, use all my nodes and use all the devices with, with the sort of subtext here that it won't use your boot device or any devices that are already in use. A good presentation, thank you very much. Um, are there any plans for Rook to be able to take over operations of an existing Ceph cluster running in Kubernetes like as may have been deployed by the Helm charts? Yes, eventually, <laughs> is, is sort of the answer. Um, I think we're, the, the first kind of step in that direction has already started to happen, which is having Rook be able to create, uh, like, Rados gateways, for instance, for a cluster that already exists. Cool, thank you. All right, any further questions? Anyone else? Uh, which algorithm that uh, Ceph, Rook Ceph uses? Because Ceph has different algorithms, right? Right, so by default, it's usually straw two, um, although you should be able to tune your pools to use one of the other algorithms if you wanted to. Is that what you were asking? Yes. Yeah, so I think straw two is still the default. Yeah, and there are options for overriding any config that Rook would place. Uh, on the Ceph cluster as well. And that's something I, I didn't go into, but that is all documented on the website or on GitHub, whichever your preferred browsing tool is. Okay. 
Uh, one more question. Can we uh, configure the crush map changes through Rook? Um, so that, that again is something that currently is technical enough that Rook doesn't automatically do it. I, I believe there is some work uh, going into automatically kind of place failure domains based on labels on Kubernetes nodes and things like that. Um, additionally, there are uh, changes going into Ceph to help better automatically manage things that kind of intuitively the user would expect Ceph to manage. Uh, so I think those things are definitely coming uh, down the road. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I was just curious if you could talk a little bit more about um, what you were saying with it trying to maintain OSD health and trying to recover things automatically. What, what exactly does it do or maybe not exactly, but uh, more detail? Yeah, I mean, the current OSD recovery is fairly basic. If an OSD crashes, it will try to bring it back up. Rook also um, stores in config maps uh, backups of like the OSD configuration data. So if that gets borked, it still can recover that information back. Uh, but definitely there is a lot more work that can be done toward making OSDs uh, more happy. Okay. So it doesn't try to reach into Ceph if Ceph becomes unhealthy for some reason. Uh, it doesn't try to go in and try to run repair commands automatically in Ceph for you. Uh, correct. Okay. Uh, at least not currently. Okay. Thanks. All right. Very nice presentation. Thank so, you. Can you use uh, Kubernetes ingress uh, load balancers for Ceph object storage? Like taking advantage of AJ proxy or any GenX, for example, instead of using the Ceph. Uh, I'm not sure what's the current uh, web backend right now. You're suggesting instead of like a Rados gateway? Uh, yes. Yes, instead of the Rados gateway, yes. Um, I'm not aware of anything Rook specific that would do that. Um, obviously, you could use ingress and map a service to the Rados gateway, which would then do the object lookups. Uh, or you could co code something custom with libRados that would do those object lookups itself, uh, and then go ahead and pass that to the client. But uh, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing Rook specific there. OK, cool. Thank you. So something else I'd like to highlight, again, with the OpenStack integration, again, we're still using the standard uh, Ceph-based integration. So you would basically go through the same configuration steps for Glance, Nova, and Cinder that you would to tie it into a production Ceph cluster. Again, the entire purpose of Rook there in the context of OpenStack is to manage the deployment and make it easy to operate. So. I'm leaping all the way from bare metal OSDs. Have you got any sense of performance differences to containerizing the OSDs? Uh, I would say the performance differences don't necessarily come from the containerization, but from the software network that Kubernetes has. Uh, so um, Ceph is something that is often network bound. And so regardless of whether it's IP tables on a node or it's Kubernetes, uh, you can see a reduction I think down to like 40% of bare metal performance. The host networking is uh, intended to alleviate that. Uh, that obviously comes with the security implications, uh, being able to use Multis and use IPVS, uh, e eBPF uh, to, uh, to make IP tables not so expensive or things in the future uh, that can specifically be used to try to combat that issue. OK, thanks. All right, not seeing a cue at the podium or the uh, speaker there. So um, if we didn't have any more questions, uh, again, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, again, both of our addresses at uh, suza.com. Um, I guess we'll yield back some time here for you guys. Thanks a lot.